What can be said about Ferrari? We could talk about a thousand things, but the most fitting words to define this SF25 in its Miami version are unpredictable and inconsistent. A car that is extremely difficult to manage, where Lewis Hamilton and Charles Leclerc try to work miracles to achieve disappointing results. This is essentially the key storyline of the Florida weekend, a track that exposed the Ferrari car's limits much more than the Marinello engineers had anticipated. Telemetry data from the sectors reveal Ferrari's problems. The Miami qualifying session shows an SF25 car in clear increasing difficulty compared to what was seen in the Friday sprint shootout. Charles Leclerc finishes with a significant gap, plus 0.550 seconds from the top, confirming a worrying trend for the SF25. Part of this worsening can be explained by a known factor, the necessary higher ride heights between the sprint and the race. And for a project so sensitive to ride height like Ferrari's, this transition represents a concrete obstacle to performance. The data speaks for itself. The bulk of the difficulties are concentrated in the first sector, where Charles Leclerc loses as much as four-tenths of a second from the reference, and in the second sector, where Ferrari is only the ninth fastest of all the cars. A detailed analysis of the lap reveals a monogasque forced to make continuous micro-corrections. In particular, he does this to stabilize a rear axle that proved unstable and twitchy throughout the session. The SF25's balance was clearly too delicate, and oversteering killed the performance out of the corners. Meanwhile, in the slow section from corner 11 to 16, the red car looked more like a rally car than a Formula One single-seater, countless meters driven sideways, losing traction and confidence turn after turn. With telemetry in hand, a first critical moment is immediately noticeable at the breaking of turn one. Charles Leclerc loses more than two-tenths compared to Max Verstappen. The Dutchman breaks later, for less time, carries plus three kilometers per hour at the center of the corner, and manages to get back on the gas sooner, even approaching turn two almost at full throttle. Meanwhile, Charles Leclerc still needs a few more meters before he can trust the car and floor the accelerator. The trend repeats itself at turn four, where the monogasque is forced to make a significant braking adjustment to insert the car properly, losing another 0.035 seconds. The unstable setup does not allow him to be precise, and this is costly on a track where every corner is closely linked to the next. Turn 6, 7, the long sweeping corner on the limit, is another weak point where he loses a tenth. The SF25 visibly slides at the rear. On the straights, it manages to limit the damage, indicating that drag is not the main issue, but in the slow section from turn 11 to 16, the car's behavior was at times truly incomprehensible. Charles Leclerc, just like Lewis Hamilton, is constantly forced into counter-steering to control a rear end that tends to break loose. This behavior strains the rear tires, causing them to overheat quickly. Traction and stability are absent. Only between turns 11 and 13, Charles Leclerc loses 0.185 seconds, a massive margin in such a short space. The moment that best sums up the situation comes via radio, at the end of the lap, when Charles Leclerc exclaims, my God, I have no idea what's happening, and that was even a good lap. I don't understand. These are words that carry weight, because they were spoken by a driver who rarely let such comments slip. In summary, what was seen on Saturday was a Ferrari that was completely unpredictable, unstable, and especially fragile in traction, and in the phases where good mechanical grip is crucial. Until the Marinello team finds a solution in this area, it will be difficult to expect any real step forward compared to the other top teams. While Ferrari continues its search for the hidden potential of the SF25, their rivals are improving. McLaren, Red Bull, and Mercedes have now been joined by Williams, with Alex Albin and Carlos Sainz managing to finish qualifying ahead of Charles Leclerc. The worst qualifying session of the season was expected, with Hamilton's third-place finish in the sprint coming thanks to a brilliant call by Lewis to switch from intermediate tires to slicks, but race pace was far from podium contention. What happened at the Miami International Circuit? Frederick Vasseur explained that, compared to Max Verstappen, who was the benchmark that day, Ferrari lost four-tenths in the first corners and a tenth in the rest of the lap. He noted that the team was clearly not in a good position in that section of the track, possibly due to tire preparation, and emphasized the need to understand what they were doing wrong because something was certainly amiss. Vasseur also reminded everyone that the SF25 had been very fast in the race at Jeddah, once again affirming his view that the car had more potential, 
but they were currently unable to unlock it. Charles Leclerc had long since lost confidence in this belief, and Lewis Hamilton seemed to align with his teammate after yesterday's qualifying. Lewis said that they were overtaken by Williams, and he praised James Vowles and his team for doing an extraordinary job. He acknowledged that they were where they were and needed updates, progress, and many improvements. So far, the SF25 had always suffered from one particular issue, and in Miami, it appeared in the first two corners, along with a mysterious problem that led both Lewis and Charles to set their best times on used tires. The most likely explanation is that Charles Leclerc and Lewis Hamilton were dealing with overheating tires on new rubber, a phenomenon that diminishes when the used tires stabilize after a cooling lap. However, after six races, it is reasonable to suggest that the challenges faced by the SF25 so far fit into a larger picture, one in which the car clearly has some objective limitations. By working on the setup, they are addressing certain shortcomings, but this often brings out other issues. Then, as in Jetta, the car can show good race pace under certain conditions, but more than a solid foundation to solve other issues, it seems like the classic case of a broken clock that shows the right time twice a day. Lewis Hamilton admitted that the car felt simply different every time they left the pits, confirming the short operating window that Ferrari's engineers were dealing with, as the seven-time Formula One world champion finished on the podium in the short 30-minute sprint race at the Miami Grand Prix, but could only qualify in 12th place for Sunday's race. Lewis Hamilton is having an up-and-down season with his new Ferrari team with highs, such as his victory in the Chinese GP sprint race, contrasted with disappointing lows. Hamilton reflected on his podium in the sprint race, describing the session as difficult and marked by mixed emotions. He acknowledged that the result in the sprint was decent but not reflective of the car's pure pace. He credited strategy for the outcome but admitted that, in terms of raw speed, the team was lacking. He mentioned having been one of the first to arrive at the track that morning to ensure the right steps were taken throughout the day, but noted with some frustration that it hadn't made a difference, as the car felt different each time he drove it. The Briton couldn't hide his disappointment at failing to reach Q3 and secure a spot in the top 10 for the race, while his teammate Charles Leclerc managed only 8th on the grid. He pointed out that they had been out-qualified by a Williams, acknowledging their rival's strong performance. In terms of pace, he felt that was simply where the team stood. He noted that Leclerc had been fortunate to progress thanks to a new tire, and suggested that he might have reached Q3 himself had he also had a fresh set. However, he added that it would likely have only placed him 8th or ninth alongside Leclerc. He admitted that while the sprint race had been better than qualifying, the team still needed upgrades and significant improvements across the board. He emphasized that both he and the team were trying everything, but even the smallest time loss had cost him. He reiterated that a new tire might have made the difference, but even then, the outcome wouldn't have changed dramatically. Looking ahead to Sunday's race, Lewis Hamilton noted that rain was forecast but remained uncertain as to whether that would provide any advantage.